Hello, welcome to my next video on health. It's the final one that I'll probably be doing on F2 one F212. So, definitions start off with fun fun fun. Health is a state of complete mental, physical and social well being and not just the absence of disease. A parasite is an organism that lives in or on another living thing, causing it harm. So if it isn't causing it harm, it's not a parasite. For example, the tick tick bird lives on rhinos and eats little pests that kind of irritate the rhino. So it gets its food and the rhino gets rid of pests. So the tick tick bird isn't a parasite. A pathogen is an organism that causes disease, simple, and a disease is a condition that impairs the normal functioning of the organism. Also, it can be the, just the departure from good health caused by the malfunction of the mind or body. Depending, both would be acceptable definitions. So, at, what is actually health? Health is when you're free from disease, able to carry out normal physical and mental tasks, you're well fed to a balanced diet, usually happy, suitably housed, integrated, loads of things. It's not just, you know, how if you're sick or not. Which I currently am, so I'm a prime example of there. So, what organisms can be can cause infectious diseases? You have bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And, those are the, and you also have um, some protoctistas, such as the malaria, plasmodium. Now, there are there are many different types of disease. You have mental diseases, self-inflicted, inherited, physical. Lots of them, obviously, you can think some mental diseases, you know, um, narcolepsy, depression, all those, self inflicted, anorexia, anything to do with smoking, alcohol abuse, all that, inherited sickle cell anemia. So, there's, there's, there's lots, there are lots of uh, different types of diseases. But there are three you need to know about malaria, HIV, and tuberculosis. You need to know what causes them, how they are transmitted, and the effect on the world. Malaria, that's caused by the plasmodium parasite, and that occurs in the Anopheles mosquito, the female Anopheles, and the Anopheles acts as a vector, and then it is passed on by blood transfer. Now, this is basically what I'm so. The, the female Anopheles mosquito will suck on the blood with something with plasmodium. Now, the plasmodium develops and migrates to a mosquito's salivary glands. So, when the mosquito then comes to bite a person, the plasmodium goes into them. Now, it migrates to either the liver or the red blood cells, which will then infect and multiply a lot. And then the person has malaria. And then the gametes of pl plasmodium form so they can reproduce, and the cycle happens again and again and again. Now, Malaria is caused by the eukaryotic organism. It is a protoctista, and it's got four variants. You well, you need to know about. And these are horrible. Now, the main one is Plasmodium falciparum, but it's also Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium ovalil, and Plasmodium malariae. Sorry if any of them are wrong, but uh, I suppose me. Surprisingly, <coughs> don't speak Latin. But just to sum up, a mosquito sucks on someone who's got the plasmodium, or an organism that has a plasmodium parasite. These gametes of the plasmodium fuse in the mosquito's stomach into a zygote, just like any organism, and then it moves to salivary glands. So when a mosquito bites someone, it injects its saliva as an anticoagulant, so blood forms, um, so you don't, that's a clot. The saliva contains the parasite, the human gets it, it goes to the liver or the red blood cells, reproduces, and the person has malaria. Oh no. But, so, what's the actual worldwide effect of malaria? It kills about 3 million people each year, but 300 million are infected. Now, they're, they're thinking that um, malaria, since it's mainly concerned, um, Mainly happens in the tropics, particularly Africa. It is moving more north, though, as more moister, warm climates form, which is a bit of a problem. But currently, 90% live in sub Saharan Africa. Now, like HIV and TB, it's most common in sub Saharan Africa, um, which 
is why it kind of is not cured. There's limited access to good healthcare, drugs not always available, also people less likely to be diagnosed, limited health education, so not many people know about these conditions, or you know, HIV they don't know about safe sex practice. There's limited equipment to spread the infection, overcrowded conditions, but there are there are ma there are many many reasons why why these diseases spread, and having all these diseases in sub-Saharan Africa can slow down the social and economic development because it increases death rates, reduces productivity, results in high healthcare costs. So, actually studying global distribution of these diseases is important. You can find out where people are most at risk, predict where epidemics are most likely to occur. We can use it for research and work out aid. So, HIV. HIV will reproduce in a person's cell, and this is why it's very clever. It has. It produces antibo antibodies. Uh, sorry, not antibodies. Antigens on the on its cell surface membrane, which are identical to the hosts, so it cannot be picked up. And then what it does, it kills the white blood cells. And then so you end up going from HIV, which is a humo human immunodeficiency virus, you get AIDS, the which is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Sorry, yeah, and you have to know what HIV and AIDS stand for as well. That's horrible. I hate doing that. But it basically means that your immune system isn't going to work as long. It means you're vulnerable to other infections, and that's what kills you. It's not the HIV or the AIDS. It's the other infections, usually pneumonia or something, which is very, very easily fight off, which you, your body can fight off easily normally with a good immune system. But if you don't have the immune system anymore, it will kill you. Now, the main way HIV is spread is through bodily fluids. Now, that can be semen or the other stuff in um, sexual intercourse that's unprotected. Now, it can be in unscreened blood transfusions if you have HIV and pass it on. If it's in, if you're sharing needles, if you're a drug abuser, which I'm sure none of you are, um, then. Uh, it will pass on through that way. It can pass on from mother to fetus, um, unsterilized surgical equipment, um, and also through breastfeeding as well, not just through the placenta. So many ways it can be transferred. Now, AIDS worldwide, 45 million people live with HIV. Well, as of 2005 anyway, but that's what you need to know about. Every year, five million new people are newly infected. And by the end of 2005, nearly 30 million had died from it. And it's pr particularly prominent in sub-Saharan Africa, as always, but also in Asia, quite a lot in Asia. Now, no, there's only ever been two people who have ever been cured of AIDS. That's permanently gone from them. So, you know, let's see. In 2005, say 45 million, 5 million every year. Well, you can work down to, say, eight more years. That's, that's, you know, well, that's basically doubled it. From now on, 80 million nearly, and it's amazing how quickly these all spread. is It is quite worrying. Anyway, tuberculosis that is caused by the Mycobacterium tuberculosis. You have to know that. Um, please note that it is capital M for Mycobacterium, small T for tuberculosis, and it is underlined showing it is in italics. That's for people doing the biodiversity section and classification. Remember to do that. It does count in this section as well. Now, tuberculosis is spread by droplet infection. Very simply, someone sneezes or coughs, it will go th coughs. It goes through the air. Now, particularly in the saliva, these are breathed in, and someone gets it. But it's n it. You require the exposure to TB over a very long period of time before you actually contract it. So it is quite hard to get, but. If you're living in overcrowded conditions, with a poor ventilation, poor health, let's say HIV, poor diet, homelessness, living or working people who've migrated from areas where TB is common, you're more likely to get it. Now, obviously, being a bacteria, it should be able to be just cured of antibiotics, but there are many reasons why it hasn't been cured, and I'll explain that in a minute. Now, TB was a real problem a number and number of years ago, but it 
it's on it stopped being such a problem but it's come back so in 2005 because that's what the book says about 8.8 .8 million new cases were recorded 1.6 million died of it so it's also rising in particularly sub-saharan africa asia and also eastern europe but the problem is the mycobacterium is becoming resistant to our drugs which is why it keeps coming back so it's all down to immunity there are two types of immunity active and passive passive and two types of that natural and artificial active natural immunity is immunity by catching the disease so you produce your own antibodies and antibodies for example immunity to chickenpox you then have active artificial immunity this is when you're given a vaccine so this is so basically active immunity is when you're getting the disease directly the disease you're and then natural is when you catch the disease, artificial is when you're given the disease deliberately. Passive immunity is when you're given the antibodies and not the disease. Natural is just when a baby gets antibodies, otherwise they would die. And I've written antibiotics, I'm very sorry, I meant antibodies. So I've really rushed this for you, sorry. But this is a via the placenta, via breast milk, so it makes it immune to diseases for a short time while its immune system builds up. Also, artificial passive immunity, this is when you're given antib antibodies from someone else, so tetanus injections, for example. Now, vaccines help control diseases, for example, influenza, but there is a problem with that. So, the influenza virus causes flu. So, proteins on the surface of the influenza virus act as antigens, triggering the immune system. Now, these antigens are always changing. So, if you, if you remember from the immune system, you produce memory cells. So, if you get that disease again, it is well, it won't hurt you or show any symptoms or be eradicated very quickly. But, since the influenza is always changing, your memory cells are of no use, which is why for the, like perhaps 20th time or more in my life I have the flu <laughs> and this is horrible so every year there are different strains of flu circulating the population different vaccines have to be made so laboratories um, and organizations who the World Health Organization and CDC Center for Disease Control they test the effectiveness of influenza drugs on the current strain and they look for which strains are being um, destroyed by it and so they can then put all the vaccines which are killing the correct strains of the flu into one vaccine and that's given to you and you get better for that year but every year it has to be circulated which is a problem it costs quite a bit of money to do this so that's that's not great now people who are generally Im immunized to old over 65 young or people that in risk groups so people who are perhaps I don't know, very poor or already have known health conditions. So, we also have a problem with antibiotics, as I was talking about with TB. Now, that the problem there is that they are not working anymore. Because what happens is you, you're given a course, let's say, two weeks of antibiotics, and you take them. After one week, you feel better. So you go, I don't need these anymore. What's happened is it's, just, it's killed off all the weak bacteria and you're left with a strong bacteria these become antibiotic resistant this is how evolution works survival of the fittest the ones that didn't instantly die from the antibiotics will survive reproduce and you end up getting antibiotic resistant bacteria and they reckon within perhaps 10 years or less that antibiotics just won't work anymore so we need to find sources of new medicine now this can come from funguses, plants, um, perhaps some bacteria. But we we we're, we're killing thousands of these every year from chopping down the rainforest, destroying coral reefs, killing species. So we need to protect them by maintaining the biodiversity on Earth. And every day we could be destroying the tree that gives us the cure, let's say, for cancer. Right now. Uh, one of the favourite questions on the exam you have 
smoking. Now there are a number of diseases caused by smoking and there are a number of things in smoke that is bad for you and these effectively are the tar which contain carcinogenic chemicals which cause cancer obviously now the tar can destroy cilia but also make produce more goblets um, make the goblet cells produce more mucus so what happens is um, more mucus collects in the airways you get a horrible cough trying to get rid of it all but the cilia don't waft away all the particles so you can get more diseases um, then bacteria and viruses can get trapped in the mucus that aren't being wafted into the stomach to be digested so you might get blocked the bronchioles get diseases and you get influenza pneumonia all these then you also have carbon monoxide this combines with the hemoglobin in your in your blood so you can't transport as much oxygen around so you get you know wheezy need air now also you can get a cough which is trying to that's not really um sorry that's um to do with the last that's to do with tar sorry um anyway sorry come monoxide um it just basically will um reduce the uh oxygen carrying capacity of your hemoglobin not good um and also nicotine which is highly highly addictive now there are a number of diseases which are caused if atherosclerosis uh, atherosclerosis which we discussed earlier which leads to coronary heart disease stroke that's blood clot in the brain thrombosis now thrombro thrombosis is basically just a creation of blood clot in a vessel a bit like a bit like strokes lung cancer bronchitis well you have lung cancer softies, bronchitis and emphysema just very quick rundown i'll do all of them in a bit more detail even though we have mentioned coronary heart disease in my last video actually in case you haven't watched that i will discuss it now atherosclerosis when damage occurs to the lining of the artery white blood cells move into the area this is more specifically due to the um, smoking it's slightly different for obesity but very similar over time more white blood cells lipid and connective tissue build up forming an atheroma it blocks the human lumen and prevents blood flow and also atherosclerosis is the hardening of arteries due to formations of atheromas but also is when you get you know tougher less flexible artery walls cigarette smoke containing nicotine increases also increases blood pressure which can damage the arteries leading to more atheromas not good ch um, coronary heart disease i've explained that a lot but why why um smoking contributes to that is because carbon monoxide irreversibly combines with hemoglobin reducing the amount of oxygen so you don't get as much ox oxygen going to your heart stroke i've basically explained that when when um disruption to the blood supply to the brain usually a blood clot nicotine increases the risk of smoke of stroke sorry because it increases the risk of clots forming as we said earlier in um if you remember the atherosclerosis as i said like a minute ago um increases blood pressure so it can damage the arteries in the brain and the carbon oxide also increases the risk of stroke because it reduced the amount of oxygen going to the brain now you have lung cancer so this is obviously just carcinogenic chemicals and you'll know what lung cancer is chronic bronchitis or normal bronchitis chronic is just a disease that is persistent over a long time chronic is the inflammation of the lungs the upper respiratory tract is lined with goblet cells that produce mucus this is this is what the um, tar does particularly it um, it really gets the uh, mucus build up so stuff you know organisms get trapped in it not organisms um, bacteria and viruses really you also have emphysema emphysema is um, lung disease caused by smoking um, it's because smoke particles get trapped in the alveoli it's causes inflammation which encourages phagocytes to the area which produces an enzyme that breaks down the elastin of the alveoli decreasing the surface area to volume ratio of the alveoli so rate of gaseous exchange decreases so short to suppress wheezing wheezing now bronchitis and emphysema together form copd chronic obstructive pulmonary disease which is involves permanent airflow reduction 
And I let me just check. Is there anything else? Nope. <laughs> There's um a little bit more on epidemiology and very simple stuff there. That's just looking at patterns and stuff. But I say I'm not feeling amazing at the moment, and I've done my best to get the two videos out. If there is anything you want me to cover, which I haven't in this video, please ask me. If it's something small, I'll just send you an email explaining it. So if there's anything big, I will do it on the video. So, questions. Name a mental disease, self-inflicted disease, and inherited disease. Outline the reasons TB is not being eradicated. Name the organism that causes TB. Name two diseases caused by smoking. Name the full name of the virus that leads to AIDS. So give you a few seconds to think to um, pause and answer good so name a mental disease now I say I've only given two examples of each there are many many so I'm sure you know if you got it right or not mental disease depression Alzheimer's self-inflicted alcoholism anorexia inherited hemophilia or down syndrome outline the reasons TB is not being eradicated yet again many reasons I've just done some HIV means that um, you're very susceptible to it. Drug cause isn't always completed, causing antibiotic resistant TB. Vaccines aren't always 100% effective to every strain of the drug. Um, often when you get TB, you will not experience any symptoms, so you can be a carrier without knowing it. Um, overcrowded condition, condition smell, nutrition, low wealth, all that. Name the organism that causes TB. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, written exactly how I have. Capital M, small t, and underlined. Name two diseases caused by smoking. Any two from bronchitis, emphysema, COPD, CHD, stroke, cancer, thrombosis, any of those. Um, yeah. um, name the full name of the virus that leads to AIDS. Human immunodeficiency virus. And that is that. So, conclusion. Health is a, is a state of complete mental, physical and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease. You have malaria caused by the Plasmodium protoctista parasite which is carried in the female Anopheles mosquito. You have HIV which is caused by the human immunodeficiency virus which will destroy your immune system and leave you susceptible to other opportunistic diseases such as pneumonia. You have tuberculosis caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is sped, spread by droplet infection. Often, not many people actually get symptoms for it, but it can cause death. Immunity, you have active and passive immunity and natural and artificial. And also, to help, you have vaccines, which basically cure you. And there's also smoking, all the diseases there. So... Thank you for listening. I hope this was helpful. You enjoyed it. As usual, leave comments, likes, um, tell your friends, tell me what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right. I don't mind. And yeah, that's basically F212 done. I mean, I could do evolution, but um, well, I can't at the moment. My pens are dead. Unless you want me to use my terrible Bic pen, which I've been using for the last few bits of this slide. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'm going to take a small break before uploading these. Yeah. Right, thanks for listening, and goodbye. <laughs>